Baltimore City officially has its new leaders in two key departments. Tonight, the full city council approved BPD Commissioner Richard Worley and Fire Chief James Wallace. Worley's confirmation coming with some heavy pushback from residents. Well, tonight's meeting comes after weeks of high profile violent incidents across Baltimore, raising more questions about the department's actions under the new commissioner's leadership. Fox 45's Keith Daniels was at the chaotic meeting tonight. He joins us live with the very latest. Keith. Well, Mary, as you know, Richard Worley is a Baltimore native and a 25 year veteran with the Baltimore City Police Department. And tonight, despite some opposition, including coming from the city's NAACP, Worley is now the city's top cop. Just ahead of the vote at Baltimore City Hall, controversy over the confirmation. Some community members adamant that council members say no to acting police commissioner Richard Worley. No deserve, sir. Council President Nick Mosby restoring order, then the vote. There's a roll call. With several council members giving their explanation before saying yay or nay. There is no perfect candidate. There will be no perfect candidate. There will always be someone that has some flaws and things that we can correct. But at this point, we can also move forward and not hold one of our most critical agencies hostage. The vote comes nearly four months after Mayor Brandon Scott named Worley acting police commissioner, succeeding Michael Harrison. Shortly after that, the deadly mass shooting in Brooklyn Homes, where Worley admitted police made mistakes in their response. But that did not stop a council committee last month from unanimously approving his nomination. Tonight, the council's full vote. Councilman Ryan Dorsey with an interesting twist and a switch. When I told the mayor's staff I was a no on this vote, I really meant it. Yes! Yes! But in the end... I have to vote yes simply because the majority of the people in my district who I have, have heard from want me to vote yes today, and that is the only reason that I'm voting yes. Final vote. 14 to 1. Richard Worley moves on as the next commissioner for the Baltimore Police Department. The only no vote coming from Councilwoman Felicia Porter. I cannot confidently commit to affirming a leader of this department without serious thought to our public safety leaders in Baltimore. We tried talking to Porter after the meeting, but she focused instead on the side exit. Porter, 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 talk to you really no, quickly sir. about, no. uh, about okay. your no vote. Porter leaves, but Council President Mosby gives an explanation on why perhaps other council members gave an explanation before giving their yes vote. I think it was a tough vote for a lot of people. It wasn't explaining away the yes vote? No, not explaining away, um, but I think really communicating. I mean, you know, a lot of times with these police things, and we've seen it uh, over the course of uh, the past a couple of years, that they become very divisive. Uh, so, you know, just kind of giving an amb ambiguous yes or no is not always kind of the right approach. But Well, Worley will have a three-year contract earning about $285,000 a year. The Board of Estimates is set to approve that contract at its meeting this Wednesday. Reporting tonight, Keith Daniels, now back to you. And Keith, you also spoke with Councilman Eric Costello about a conversation he had with Worley earlier today. Can you tell us more about that? Well, that's right, Mary. We did talk to uh, Councilman Costello. He said that he had a meeting with Worley before the confirmation vote. He said he was concerned about those two recent crimes, that one involving the murder of the tech CEO and the rape of a Baltimore City woman and who was also set on fire. Worley, or rather, Costello said he had concerns about those crimes, in including critical information connected to the suspect arrested in both of those cases. Jason Billingsley, he called Worley over to City Hall. Worley came over and then, according to Costello, Worley admitted leaving out or not releasing, rather, critical information in this case.
I think that the commissioner's probably done his due diligence and come to the same conclusion that myself and other elected officials and, and community leaders and members have come to, that that photo and that name should have been released immediately following the incident on the 800 block of Edmondson Avenue. And I'm glad that he's come to that conclusion. Uh, I'm glad that he is investigating it, uh, and I will hold him to his commitment that he made to me today that appropriate personnel action will be taken once he, he sees the results of that investigation. Well, Costello, like 13 other people, still voting yes to confirm him as the police commissioner. Now, we did reach out to the uh, police department for a statement or comment on this issue, but so far tonight, we have not heard back. We're live tonight. Keith Daniels, Fox 45 News. Keith, thank you. As you mentioned, it seems what Commissioner Worley told Councilman Costello that he made a mistake in not releasing Billingsley's picture contradicts what he said just one week ago. Listen. Because there, there was two victims from Edmondson Avenue that were still out. One was in the hospital, one was at their location. We had to get them protection if we were going to put that information out. Well, Fox 45 News spoke to a law enforcement expert who says Worley's comments about protecting victims were an excuse. He says all signs should have pointed to police releasing Billingsley's information earlier. But you have a situation where a person has uh, attempted murder of two people in an apartment. Uh, he has set the building on fire. Uh, that is a clear indication that this person is a threat to the community. Well, today, a Baltimore City judge denied bond for Jewel Crowder. He is the man accused of killing off-duty Howard County Sheriff's Deputy Ryan Demby on Thursday night in Federal Hill. The murders of Demby and tech CEO Pavel Appare, just a few incidents casting a shadow on how Mayor Brandon Scott is handling Baltimore's crime crisis. The mayor is pointing to a reduction in gun violence from this time last year, but some aren't satisfied with his messaging. Fox 25's Mackenzie Frost pressed the mayor today. Mayor Bennett Scott is quick to point to the reduction in homicides and non-fatal shootings compared to this time last year, but we also have some high-profile homicides and various city agencies within City Hall operating without a permanent director and a political expert warns the road to re-election for the mayor could be bumpy. We're about showing our residents that we can, they can depend on city government. Baltimore City Mayor Brennan Scott leading the city back in the national spotlight, this time for the wrong reasons. <laughs> Baltimore City Tech CEO Pavel LaPere killed in her apartment building. Ryan Demby, an off-duty Howard County Sheriff's deputy gunned down outside of a bar in popular Federal Hill. Young people continuing to drive off with stolen vehicles. As of September 23rd, nearly 8,000 stolen cars this year alone in the city. That's a 223% increase from this time last year. Beyond public safety, the safety of drinking water under the microscope after a microparasite found in Druid Hill Park Reservoir. During a fall cleanup blitz announcement, a variety of city uh, services in a span of 90 days. We questioned the mayor about the several problems facing his administration. Is this the Baltimore that voters should expect to see if you do win re-election? Well, I think, Mackenzie, what I'll say again is that we're always putting forth the best team. We're going to continue to put forth the best team possible, but we know uh, that some people are going to leave and take jobs. We're going to continue to fill those positions as quickly as possible, but also maintaining our ability to be a high-functioning city government. Suspects already arrested and charged in the Demby and LaPair cases. Meanwhile, hundreds of others remain open. What do you say to the other family members who are still waiting for closure in their cases when we saw quick action in two high-profile cases? I think that I'll say this again, Mackenzie. When anybody uh, says that, our homicide detectives work hard every single solitary case that they get. Uh, we're going to continue to do that. While the mayor is helping install a speed hump in communities, political analyst John Deedy argues Scott should be worried about high-profile homicides slowing down his re-election efforts. It's a big speed bump 
because they happen in communities where this type of stuff doesn't happen. Interim directors leading several agencies within the administration, the Department of Public Works, the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement, or MONZI, which is tasked with overseeing the flagship gun violence prevention program, Safe Street, implementing the group violence reduction strategy and maintaining the cornerstone of Mayor Scott's holistic crime plan. It leaves people wondering, where's the organization involved in city government. Didi argues while people voted for then city council president Brandon Scott in 2020, they were looking for a new chapter in Charm City's history. They voted for youth and optimism. And it was really a vote for change. But so far, he argues that change hasn't fully been realized. Mayor Costello, Councilman. During Monzi's budget hearing in June. In, in a harbor. City Administrator Faith Leach assured the City Council a permanent leader of Monzi would be named within 60 days. Almost 120 days later, Interim Director Stephanie Mavronis is still in place. We, we are still searching. We have some folks, and, and we're going to continue to bring in the best and best and the brightest. Uh, we some of the folks that we wanted, we we considered took other jobs. One is a very very high profile job in the in the world of, of violence reduction. And in fact, you can't get any higher. Is That's, Stephanie part of that you, search? You, had, you, I just, you I had, just want no, to know if Stephanie you, is part of the search. Anybody that applies is a part of the Has search. Has she applied? I can't. Now you know I can't tell you that. That's a that's a personnel issue, Mackenzie. Thank you. The mayor keeping tight-lipped about the search for an agency he says is critical in the city's effort to saving lives. While bullets continue to fly, like here in Brooklyn along Patapsco Avenue Sunday night, feet from a safe street zone, crime scene tape marks off more blocks where the bloodshed continues to spill. And Baltimore remains a city with more than 300 homicides for the last eight years in a row. Right now, former Mayor Sheila Dixon is running against Mayor Brandon Scott in the Democratic primary. Former independent candidate Bob Wallace has an exploratory committee, but so far hasn't made any permanent announcements. The primary election is set for May 2024. In the newsroom, Mackenzie Frost, Fox 45 News.